it'll be locked to onto your character, but you can use it to peek. If you point a gun at an enemy, the crosshairs will turn yellow if they haven't spotted you, red if they have, or really red if they know where you are and are actively fighting you. And there's also an indicator above their head if they've spotted you and sometimes you'll get a timer before they decide that you know, you're the enemy and the radar will indicate if the enemy is unaware of your presence, a green arrow that points in, a, in the direction that they're facing. If they have suspicions, it'll be in the yellow, and if they are certain that there's an enemy nearby, i.e. you, it'll be red. The binoculars work relatively well. Would be nice if you could zoom in and out, but I don't know, maybe that's historical accuracy for you. We do get some pretty fun gun battles and sniping sequences. Sometimes the two are combined and the sniper can pick off enemies while they're further away, you know, and or have an easier chance of getting to certain ones, while the Green Beret is, you know, closer to the enemy, having to use, you know, assault rifles. The guns are, again, the ones they had back then, and they're pretty realistic. Not all shots will hit. If you fire an automatic weapon, you know, fire bursts, you'll hit less and less the longer you fire. You get to use assault rifles, a shotgun, you get to use assault rifles, a somewhat long distance rifle, a shotgun, some pistols, and knives. Also the spy has a piano wire, but there's really no difference between that and the knives. So. The spy can throw the knives, and he has six, and he can pick them up after he's used them, and he can also stealth kill using the knives. The Green Beret can dual wield some weapons, you know, again going for that Rambo kind of one-man army thing. You go to Norway, France, and Russia. The music is definitely a high point in this. We get a grand orchestral score, very epic. In fact, pretty much the only thing in this that is truly, effectively epic. And it almost always fits the mood of the situation that you're in. You know, it isn't always bombastic. You know, if you're just sneaking around or going about your business, it's much more subtle, but still very effective. The voice acting is decent enough, but the accents are really over the top. Really, all the accents other than the British and American accents. Even the Norwegian accent is kind of overdone, and I'm also not entirely sure they know what Norwegians sound like. Seriously, just get a Scandinavian person to record those lines in English. A lot of us have a really hilarious accent. For example, you know the current Secretary General, or General Secretary, whatever, of NATO, Anas Fogh Rasmussen? He's a Dane. Listen to him talk English. Honestly, this is a lot like where eagles dare, just not as fun as that movie. The level design is okay, but the immersion is lacking. For example, the mountains in Norway really don't look natural at all, and the linear nature of all of the levels is kind of bothersome. I know that not all of the games in this franchise have been really open-ended and have let you just figure out your own solution. For example, the first one kind of forced you to figure out the correct solution, but there it was still fun, and it didn't feel linear. Here, you can practically feel, you know, a hand at your back shoving you in the right direction. You can't go wrong in this game. If you get wounded, you can be healed by another commando, provided there is one. If your only commando in the level gets wounded, you'll lose that attempt. You can also heal yourself using medkits, and that's provided you have them. 
you can only carry four at any given time, and you don't always come by a ton of them. This is really lacking in scope, which the first two had a plenty. I haven't been able to get the multiplayer to work, but I can tell you what the manual says about it. You've got the regular deathmatch, and you've got team deathmatch, and then there is this specific one called sabotage, where every team must have at least one spy, and the spy can interrogate a dead, yes, dead enemy within the first five seconds of him dying, unless it's the enemy spy, or one of the enemy spies, in which case you get ten seconds. A regular enemy will reveal one digit of the six-digit password, an enemy spy will reveal three digits. Once you have all six digits, you can sabotage the enemy's base, and this is how you score points. That might be fun, even if it is kind of dumb to interrogate someone who's recently deceased. Better bring a Ouija board. You can play as either the Allies or the Axis forces. And as far as I can tell, you can play as some of the same classes as the characters in single player. Anyway, all in all, it's okay. It just doesn't really compare with any of its natural competitors. If you want a good stealth game with a first or third person perspective, play Hitman, play Splinter Cell. If you want a good tactical FPS set during World War II, or if you're not critical, there are several other wars to choose from. I don't know the exact titles, but you know, Battlefield, and the other ones. I don't know, go ask an expert on that genre. My point being, you can do better than this game. And so can Pyro Studios. I think this one might have been a good idea to, you know, outsource. If you want a good Commandos game, go for the first, its expansion pack, or the second game. While this might not be as frustrating as the third Commandos game, the third Commandos game, all in all, actually has more entertaining and memorable sequences, I would say. Anyway, that was my spoiler for review of Commandos Strike Force. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. How do you know who I am, random hot French woman? It does not matter. Now listen very carefully, I shall say this only once. Can nobody in this country keep a secret? <laughs> Sorry, I must have overdosed on nitrous oxide earlier. In a mission I feel, on account of political correctness, I have to refer to as Caucasian Alamo. Does anybody else love how the two Norwegians are taking turns drinking from their beer mug and then slamming it down into the table. At least once they do it simultaneously. The glory of scripted sequences. On that subject, that dog in the, I think, intro sequence of the last level was seriously going for the record of wagging its tail. Okay, is my copy broken? Is there, like, a cutscene missing or something? Or do we just not at all get the explanation that we were promised by the spy. I mean, they found out that he's, you know, actually German, you know, after all the red herring stuff of, is he the traitor? Obviously he isn't. But then, they never give us the explanation. I mean, I don't have a problem with the idea that a German would be helping the Allies. Not all of them believed in Hitler and the Nazis, but we were promised an explanation. I mean, we just get that really shitty ending with, oh, that would sure be a shitty vacation. <laughs> yeah, okay.
can we please move beyond, you know, the 80s and 90s of ending movies on really shitty one-liners that aren't even particularly jokes? Okay, maybe I was way too tired when reading along the subtitles when the Russian soldier was telling me I have to save this Petrov guy, but when he said, it's not far, what I first read was, it's not fair. And the idea of someone actually exclaiming that during a world war, that's just hilarious to me. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Commando Strike Force. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.